Hello guys! I hope you are all doing well and you are able to hear me. If I should put my mic a bit more quiet or louder, please let me know in chat. And today I'm gonna go over the basics that I already have learned in SCUT. Um, there, that was pretty much the first thing I've learned in SCUT. It after a while, once you get a hang of it, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, I prefer doing it here way more than doing it in Visivik. Um, I will show you in a second how good and easy and quick it works. Then sounds good on my end. Perfect. All right, cool. So let's start. Uh, first of all, the uh, stream or the license of Escut is sponsored by Anivision. Uh, they developed Escut Revent. So let's go and start. So first, what we want to do. Uh, in for scaffolding and for other things as well is if we look on the right side of the of the snap bar that you can see here it's highlighted in blue whenever there's something uh, on as a snap so what we want to have for building scaffolding or layer uh, first of all we want to clear uh, all snaps and that what we want to use is snap to point which is just one small red dot uh, I can demonstrate why we need to use that uh, so first I'm gonna start off with a wood plate then with uh, whatever you call that thing and a spindle there is one tool or snap or whatever you call that it's called S-Track uh, if I pull that off and if I wanna just uh, go along the pipe or whatever it's called I can toggle on S track and now if I hover over the point and go up a little bit it will stay on the on the point and just move it's just moving up the C axis so now we have let's just place a standard That is on the on the verticals, so we're going to use a two meter width pen. So now, as you can see, the snaps are there's one over here, there's one over here for all the ledgers, and there's one over here for the whatever that thing is called, and one down here for the starting point of the floor thingy let's call it that way so now we're gonna place that one in here so now oh, we have that one so let's demonstrate why we should um, have only that snap point on so I'm going I'm gonna go to ledgers. We're going to need a two meter ledger, and now with all the snap points, we have a center one, we have one over here, one over here, one over here. Then most of the time, I also have that one on. So that gives you way more options, which you 
don't want to have. So now I'm going to clear that one. I'm going to disable the end snap and the center snap. I'm going to go back to my library, take the 207. I can place it down here. As soon as I selected something from the library, I can move it or rotate it. Uh, rotate it is the word for it. So if I click uh, F9, I can rotate it clockwise in uh, 45 degree steps, which makes sense for layer because you can put a uh, ledger over here. You can put one over here, over here, over here, over here, and over here as well. So what we're going to do now is we build first... Uh, these two ledgers so what we're gonna do now is we click the arrow to the right oh, that doesn't work now all right so now we want that one and that one and that one and now we have our first square kind of so because what I'm going to build now is always or most of the time uh, two by two by two so two meters to the back two meters to the side and two meters uh, on the C axis so I'm gonna type in the command uh, copy C or uh, CC, <laughs> hard to spell out. So I'm gonna click enter, and now I click that point and that point up here, which is exactly two meters. And then we already aware that we placed it right. And what I can do now, let's build it correct. So I'm gonna select the top section pull copy C again so now it pulls up two meters or two thousand as because I'm drawing millimeters so now if I click enter I can, I can make my tower as high as I want it or needed to which we're gonna figure out in a bit how high it has to be there are also another way of copying. So if I, for example, have uh, different distance and distances in between, what a hard word, I can just go copy, enter, or Z. I click that point because that one is the reference point that I need. And I can put it over here, I can put it over here, I can put it over here, over here, over here, wherever I need it to go. So now we clear that out again. So let's go and actually build the first object. I'm going to have a look how it looks just a second nope need to find it first come on where is it Wrong folder. There it is. So I need a one, two, three. Not a back one, it's one, two, three, four, five, five high. 
One, two, three, four, five squares. I'm gonna take that one out, these two and these two, and then I'm gonna replace it with uh, vertical without a pen. Just a bit nicer if the layer sticks out, if it's on an actual stage. I'm going to take the diagonal or bracing. I think we call it bracing in English. In in Holland they have a really hard word for it called schroche, whatever. I always misspell it or don't really spell it correct. Now what we're gonna do is we take that part and we copy it and we need it over here and then we need one up. exactly over here and we need one and the third one over here as well and now I'm just gonna fill these out I'm gonna go to S cut tools, click the right error, arrow, yeah, arrow, that's the word. <laughs> so I'm gonna select these two again, copy them again. I'm gonna place them over here. And I'm pretty sure there might be a faster way to draw stuff, but since I'm just learning it, pretty much for three months now, I don't really have the maybe the correct way of drawing things fast yet. So maybe I'll get a A quicker way at some point. So we're gonna take that one, copy it over here, and now what we need is that one, that one. Boom. 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 Right now, I'm gonna fill that one out and select all of them. Copy C. So now we're on the floor again, and I should have taken the ledgers as well so we're gonna fill that one up with diagonals to yeah that one is the right one that one is already in the library rotated the way it should be because it's not uh, on a straight uh, in a straight line it's it's rotated 45 degrees if you build basic layer structures so that's a uh, already a nice way of or easy and quick way of uh, placing it so I think that object is almost done 
What we're gonna need is these ones. You know. Boom. There we go. Now what we need is we take that one over here. Now the same object is used again. So what we're gonna do is we go to the top view and we select the whole structure. Uh, there are two ways of selecting stuff. If you drag from right to left, I guess, you get a greenish uh, background, which means if an object is inside of that square, it will be selected. As we can see, uh, we didn't uh, select the whole ledger on here. But it's still selected. If we drag from left to right, we get a blue background. So that only selects the full. Uh, if an if the object is completely, the whole object is inside of that box. So now that ledger isn't selected, and that's exactly what we want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the whole first object. It's a little bit glitchy, but that's just my old laptop. Sometimes the, the library glitches out on my laptop, but that's just because my laptop is probably close to dying all right so we need the same object again but needs to be a little bit higher so what we're going to do let me see if I can somehow build it really quick. Boom. So that needs to go. Take. The copy. That one goes on top of here so now as we can see these ones should be replaced with a vertical that has a pen in it to just easily stack it so basically we have almost Half of the stage ready or finished. So now what we have is let's just finish the bottom. And these ones, so that is correct. Let's go out a little bit and also to the right. Then oh, over here. We need these standards, except for that one, obviously. So take that one, 
place it over here. Fill that one up. And then fill up the left side. And we're basically got these we don't need over here. Let's go that way. So now the floor section is almost done. Now what we're gonna do is we have a stage or decks along the way. So on over here it's gonna start on one meter and inside of here it's gonna be on Two meters so what we're gonna do is we go back to our library we're gonna go to stage beams there is is it that one nope where is it that one so we're gonna place them nicely along the way where it needs to be going outwards here and here here rotate it again boom 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 now we copy that one down here and So now we have four stage beams. Over here. And what I'm gonna do is just copy it over here. Again, copy that part, and of course, I missed some. Amia, sup, Philip? What are we building? Uh, I'm building Ground Zero from 2018. So, it's just a it's basically a pretty pretty simple but nice looking stage I have to say so I'm gonna copy that one over here over here and we delete that one take that one over here. Boom, boom. So now what we can do is we select that section and copy it down to here. And now we're just going to fill it up with text and then that's basically already it. So we have a, a brown deck which is two or a double of the, the uh, plate that is two by one meter. 
uh, and has no cuts in it because if you put it goes exactly from from the center over here of that tube to over here so you have like you don't have any holes in between so now we're gonna fill out these so we need uh, a deck that has two hole uh, two cutouts on the front which I think is gray yeah there it is so I'm gonna take that one put it over here we put it over here that one over here over here over here over here over here and then we take a brown one and fill these ones up that one is brown as well and now we're gonna get to the specials because we only have one cut up cut out which is either a blue yellow thingy so we're gonna rotate it that one works for here it works for here it works for here for here and for here as we can see we have a perfectly fitting cut out that we need and then a black and yellow that one is already the right way it should be rotated and that one over here this software can also make decoration um Yes, it can. I do know from the developers, there are a lot of companies, uh, decoration companies, that are drawing their decoration stuff uh, in the software. Uh, so far, I only figured out the basics, like uh, just uh, some normal surfaces or extruded, whatever it's called. I'm not that uh, familiar with cat uh, programs but you can also draw decoration stuff it is uh, almost or uh, close or similar to AutoCAD you have a draw 2d function where you can just draw some polylines and then if we enable the end snap and now I can say extrude pick a point one and now I have like my surface that's that's basically the, the furthest I got with um, with decoration really like the cutout stage plates yeah there's also a pretty cool feature now if we go to the top and we select the visual style 2d wireframe uh, we can see because these plates are exactly colored uh, in the storage or the, the the companies that are using it and now you can see in the drawing when you have it all right I need uh, two grays over here I need a brown uh, I need three brown ones I need a yellow blue one now I need two yellow blue ones I need one yellow black one then another four gray and it's pretty easy to make a count list to know exactly what you need to pack and it's also pretty easy for the people building it because I use these drawings uh, many times when I worked for Stageco and Interstage which are drawing with that software so it's uh, pretty handy and very easy for the people that are building these stages with those drawings uh, because yeah it's pretty well laid out and you can you also have a pretty cool function which is called standard plan uh, that one is over here so now I select these uh, I pick a point for my table and then I say scale did 
Should I select it? Now I scale it up a little bit. There's also an option to get it right in the first the first time, but I haven't figured it out yet. So now you can see number one is a, a spindle, which is the first bottom thingy or whatever. Then uh, whatever that's called. That's probably, um, let me check, that part, only that one, the spindle is I think the, the bottom section and the turn thingy. And then you have a 2 meter standard without a pen, or a 2 meter vertical without a pen, the CP stands for sonda pen, which means uh, without a pen. And you can see... Let's go back to the top and to the wireframe. Number one is in fact a two meter without. And that way it's pretty cool because um, you can see already when you um, build the ground first. All right, um, I can prepare what is number two. Number two is a two meter standard, two meter, a two meter, and a two meter without a pen. So usually we, at stage or at interstage, or uh, I guess when building scaffolding, uh, we uh, prepare those verticals till six meters, and then we just uh, put it in a hole and flip it up, and the rest we just. Uh, hand up in a line so in every like two meter square one of uh, there's one person on the floor standing over here then there's one person over here in here in here and the top one uh, the top the person on top is building everything so these people in the squares are just handing up the stuff so the six meters or three uh, two meter standards we put them together on the ground and then we place them in here uh, we mostly do that together and then we just run it up and then yeah with the with the standard plan it's pretty easy to prepare those things and also have a little bit in mind what we need to hand up uh, to the person or to the people that are building and also sometimes it's a uh, two meter then it's a uh, one Point five meter and then it's a five uh, a zero point five meter but on the drawing it looks like two meter so yeah these things are planned in because of whatever reason uh, so and also they are packed f uh, exactly with that count so you better you, you should better build it the way it's on the drawing can you change the basic names of each part to go SBS with the parts in warehouse? Um, I think so. Uh, what I do know is, or how how the library works. When it comes to layer, you have uh, you can find it on the stage. Uh, there is CoreWorks, which is a Dutch uh, scaffolding company. They have their own layer uh, database, which looks like that. I think they have everything in there, what they have in their storage. And then you have the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the standard or the, the default. Uh, it's basically the same, but uh, core works probably works a little bit uh, different with uh, less snap points or whatever so they have probably their own warehouse for that uh, what you can do is uh, or before I'm um, telling you the the library so lights backstage production stage tents video rigging sound stand that's the library from SCAD so you can change stuff in here and copy or place stuff in the library 
but as soon as there is an update it will be erased and put back to default again but you can uh, create your own library uh, as I have here it's called custom library and I have a few QDance ports stored in here so just by selecting one I can easily just drag my uh, decoration whatever thing that's called out and place it so it's a pretty quick way or pretty cool to have your own um, library and now for the final of the stage what we're gonna do is we mirror it because if you wanna draw quick and efficient you and if it's a symmetrical stage obviously I'm just gonna use the mirror command I select the center and then I click no keep in tiles and boom there we have it all right so that's it for this stage I'm gonna show you my biggest creation in this software so you can see what are the possibilities I'm pretty sure the possibilities are all close to limitless because most of the or all the big companies and also small companies in Holland are using these uh, that software and I have tried to draw that stage it's not finished yet exact uh, completely I tried to draw that one in Visivik but it's completely impossible because if I have a block and it's rotated in whatever degrees and I forgot about it and it's a, uh, it got created as a block I can go into that block I can uh, double click it and now it opens the block completely straight there is no um, uh, no rotation on it so it's pretty easy to just draw on here and and snap stuff on the trusses or go along the XYZ axis so it's it, it's pretty cool and maybe I'm going to do a complete live stream or a live stream where a complete uh, I built this complete stage but first I have to finish it and figure it out what the sizes are because I'm just looking at pictures and guessing however big stuff is I mostly start up by drawing the layer because that's always pretty visible and easy to see and I know the sizes of the layer so yeah first I build the layer and then I'll just place the frames or the objects uh, around the layer and have a look if it fits perfect if it looks too big as it's on the picture and blah 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 so yeah if i have finished that one stage i probably do a live stream about it how to build it because that covers a lot of uh features tools and commands in scot and yeah it's also a pretty nice looking stage and it's pretty fun to build it took me a while because I started it a few uh, weeks ago already but that didn't really look that nice and now I tried it again and it worked a little bit faster and easier so yeah the more you use SCOT the more you get uh, a hang of how it works I mean if you're coming from a cat based software it's probably gonna be pretty easy for you but I'm coming from Visivik and Visivik works a little bit different but the more you use SCOT the more you lean towards SCOT in making sense on how to build stuff or draw stuff and Visivik is just alright yeah well simplified basically so yeah you have more possibilities to create stages like this and yeah Visivik is done for visualization so if I'm finished with that stage 
I'll just export the DWG. Uh, I import it into Visivik. I hang my lights. Um, and then I'll just go and have a light show with it rather than trying around in, in Visivik and figuring out how I could build something like that. So, yeah. I'm really happy to be able to use SCUT and just draw in there for fun and learn it. So a big thanks to the developers for uh, making this possible. And that's the end of the stream now. Uh, if you have any questions now, uh, just ask them. I'm gonna wait for two minutes and then I'm gonna close the stream because I have to go to Vienna because I'm gonna do some scaffolding tomorrow, finally. My first job after March in the event industry, finally. So yeah, if you got any questions now, please ask them. I'm trying to um, answer them. I'm still pretty new to the software, so I can't answer everything, but I'm trying to. What are we looking at? price wise for Esca. Uh let me check I, I'm gonna go to their website and then I can let you know uh, I think there's also in the description a link yeah there's a link to their website so buy Escot reinvent you can find that option on the top so Escut re-event costs uh, 3,150 euros. That's for the software. Uh, you can choose to have maintenance. So like I think like the license as is in Visivik. So if you choose to have the maintains, maintenance, whatever it's called, uh, you get all the updates uh, whenever there's something updated in Escut. So if you think, all right, fine, whatever I'm, I need Escut for, uh, and or if you think Escut has everything that you need uh, to have at the moment, and you know that you're never gonna whatever uh, need anything else that isn't in the software now, you can just uh, pay the price or buy the software for once. And then you're never gonna get another invoice from them. So there is no like uh, yearly or monthly subscription that books off money. It's just the 3,150 years you got the software, but there won't be any updates. I don't know if the updates are going to be for a year or if they just stick to the software you uh, update you have when you buy it. But yeah, I highly recommend to do the maintenance. It's 750 euros a year, which uh, isn't that much, given when the industry is back, because it's basically yeah a few days of work. And the updates are, I think, necessary, because there are new features, there are whatever, new uh, library um, object so it's pretty good to have the maintenance um, Cedric okay cause maybe I missed a bunch basic workflow when constructing a stage design what do you mean Cedric Oh yeah, Amir, yes, it's the Dino Stage. It's it's the T-Rex from Mystery Land 2018. It's done by Qdance. It's one of my favorite side stages. Because the stage you're seeing now, that's just a side stage. It's not the main stage. It's a side stage. But yeah, that shows you how crazy it is working in Holland. Alright, so I'm going to end the stream now. Uh, if you want to 
check out uh, more or if you want to have more info on Escot, the link is in the description. Uh, you can check out the pricing. Uh, you can send them a mail uh, if you have any further questions. Uh, there are some tutorial videos from them on their YouTube channel. So you can check them out as well. There is a few things that are covered in there and a few cool things that uh, shows you what uh, Escar is capable of. Alright, I got a few questions. Like how you start from beginning to finish when you think about a design. Cedric, I'm gonna do a whole live stream building a complete stage. So I'm gonna start from scratch. Probably when I have finished that stage you're seeing now. I'm going to redraw it again and then I'll go from a complete blank uh, drawing to the stage you're seeing now. And I'm trying to explain everything I'm doing on the way. Or when someone comes to you and asks for a stage. Uh, yeah, that always depends on the, on the client or what their... Uh, there are a lot of factors when it comes to a stage design. Uh, it's budget, it's the material you have, because not every country in the world can uh, supply a stage like that. So it always, always depends on a lot of factors. Up, not a DEFCON 19 black stage is the best side stage. Yeah, because you did it, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I I love that one as well. Oh, you mean the the video? Uh the video will be online right after the stream is finished, so you can just rewatch it however often or how, whenever you want it. And I'm going to keep it online. So, yeah, feel free to I think come back in an hour. Then it will be public because YouTube needs a little bit of time to process it. Like process it, I guess. But yeah, I can see it right after. Maybe some people can as well. Party Plus still in Austria, mate. Yep, still in Austria, and probably not going back to Holland this year anymore because money issues. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, uh. See you guys probably in the next stream. Thanks for tuning in and make sure to subscribe, leave a like, maybe a comment. You can still comment on the video once it's uploaded and I can still answer your questions after that. Alright, see you next time. Bye bye.